So how did you go with the read-along books? Could you actually pinpoint along the way some of those 12 steps of the hero's journey? So here was the two books that you did with the read-along, which was Monty Bear, the original story, how he came about, and then Monty Bear in Singapore. So in the story, you could tell that there was a problem to solve, which was the riddle. He had some hesitations along the way, and this is where the emotional literacy came along, where he does his belly breaths and everything. And then the mentor in here, Uncle Lim, helps him along the way, and then when he touches the golden star, that takes him to his next extraordinary world. So now, people always ask me, how do I get from, I want to write a children's book to actually here are the children's What I want to share with you now is there's some industry standards that actually come with writing children's books. You don't just go off and do them. So do you actually know how many pages are in a children's book? There is an industry standard of it's 32 pages. Some books might go to 36, some might be 28, but they are always in lots of four as well. Now the reason why they're in lots of four, it's just purely because of the printing process. When you are printing a book, you're printing it on front and back and left and right sides. So it needs to, when you then fold it into the book, it needs to be in lots of four. So lots of four, generally it's 32 pages. 700 words or less, 200 to 700 words is normally the word count. And you might think, whoa, that's like 700 words, that's a lot. It's not actually. 700 words to do properly of quality in a children's book is really hard. So the process I went through, we thought of the story and we did a big brainstorm and we um, were putting out, like plotting out what's going to happen with the book along the way. We were also thinking about having a series, so we had to keep that in mind. So when you read the first Monty Bear book, you might think, oh, like nothing really happens, where's the journey? It's This is sort of the prequel and then we start getting into the hero's journey along the way with the second, the third and the fourth book that's coming out. So we did a big brainstorm with the story and we, as I was teaching kindergarten at the time, I would actually um, just verbally say the story to my children that I was teaching, the students, and get their feedback. So then we wrote the actual story got to about our 700 words, and then you go through the editing process, where we then gave it to other people yet again to look at the grammar and the punctuation and um, the words that we use. Were they too simple? Were they too complex? Were they easily understood? Did the story flow? So we process as well. Then we haven't even got to illustrations yet. Then we would do the illustrations. So I'll talk more about this book, about how we, how we did it all. So with this book, the Singapore book with the illustrations, we had an illustrator, her name is Zura Johnson. She was um, a parent at the school I was teaching at here in Singapore. And back home in America, she's quite a famous artist. Um, to do with the illustrations, we knew we didn't want to have like a drawing or watercolour or even a digital one. Zura specialises more in collage techniques. So where you actually cut the paper out and you're gluing them down. So we went with that. So we gave to Zura our storyline of the 700 words. But before we could even do that, we needed to figure out what's going to go on what page. So when I talked about the 32 words, the 32 pages, sorry, that includes front cover, and back cover and everything on the inside. That's the 32. So we said to Zura, we need a front cover. And then on the inside here, these are called end sheets. You'll find them the, in, the mid, in the front as you open it and you will also have it on the back. So we actually chose a world map that um, we created and this is on the inside of every one of our books. So the Australia book, the original one and all the rest we're going to publish. The reason why we chose this is because as you know, Monty Bear touches a golden star in the book and he's transported to another location. So what we have here is we put the magic star for our Singapore book over 
Singapore. And in the Australia book, where do you think we're going to put the star? The star will be here over Australia. When we do the next book after that, over America, it will be over here. So that's a, a continuation that we're going to do along the way. Then when you open up, so this is part of our spreads here, this is um, say a publishing copyright page and information and also a dedication if you want to. So you don't have to do a dedication page, but you know, it's always a nice thing to do in there. Um, in here we've got all the details about the book to say what year it was published in, who the publisher is, um, and also the ISBN number. Do you all actually know what an ISBN, ISBN number is? It's sort of like a cataloging system for um, all books around the world. So it's an identification number. So I can go on the internet, I pay about $50 and I get given an ISBN number and also a barcode. And I must put the ISBN number in here. This is only if you want to sell the book. If you're just going to print them and give them out, then you don't have to worry about that. But with the ISBN number, anybody can go onto this system, type in the number for Monty Bear and the book will come up. It will say how many pages as it is, how many words, um, it will talk about the author and the illustrator, it might even have a picture there for you. So it's, a, it's an identification system for it. Then you have an inside front cover, it generally is related to the front cover. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, some people do, um, but it's generally related to it. And then you start off with the actual story. Now these are what we call spreads, so not like say page one, page two. This is spread one, and then we have spread two, and so on. The reason why we do spreads is because most stories don't have separate identities on each page. They generally will continue across. So this book, this, um, this spread here, you can see that we've got the illustration going across the page. But then there might be other ones where they're actually totally different and they're not going across the page. So here, this part where he's at Lao Passat, this is one page and this is another and they're totally separate. The illustrations aren't going across the page. But that's okay, so we just call them spreads that way. So what we had to do was figure out what's going on each page, what's going on each spread, and we would go through our story and actually take out the paragraphs or the sentences for each page. So we would tell Zura, our illustrator, that on spread one, this is the text that we're going to have. We wouldn't actually say we want the text to be up here on the left hand side or anything like that. We would just say this is it. We then gave Zora um, creative um, license to go and come up with whatever she thought, you know, would be matching the text. And along the way, as she was doing it, she would then send us photos or we'd have meetings and we could offer suggestions as well. But pretty much what Zora came up with, with these images, that's what we stuck with. And we might have tweaked them along the way a little bit. How she did her illustrations was on a big A3 piece of paper. So it wasn't on paper that was this um, big, it was A3. Once she had done the illustrations and we were happy with each spread, we then took the A3 pieces of paper and got them professionally scanned. Once they're scanned, we go to a graphic artist and the graphic artist, they will then get the words and lay them out. And so actually put the words here onto the specific page and lay them out properly. And going all the way from page one, the front cover, all the way to the end at the very back. So that's what would happen there to get to that stage. Then we go off and we do the printing. And we, even when you're printing, there's lots of things to consider as well. What type of binding do you want? What GSM, which is the thickness of the paper that you want? Do you want your cover to be a glossy finish or a matte cover? So for this book, the Singapore one, an example is the binding that we had, it's called thread sew and binding. So where they actually go and sew, going through it and a bit of glue. Then also we decided we wanted to have a glossy cover. And also just even the size of the book we had to research that as well to see what would be the best size because we wanted to also fit into Monty Bear's backpack because the books do come with the teddy bear but it needed to also fit on children's bookshelves and also into libraries so this is how we came up with all of that
Now I'll quickly just show you at the end as well with our different spreads. So some people um, might do their end sheets exactly the same as their front sheet, but we thought we won't put a map of the world here. We actually put our about the author information. It doesn't have to go on the back sheet. Sometimes it goes on the front, it might go on the back cover, but it can go anywhere. And we put these little um, Polaroid photo templates here because we've encouraged children with their own Monty Bear plush toy that they get with the book to go out and take photos of their own adventures and they can stick the photos in there. So it's, it's an interactive um, strategy that we use. Then on the back, you've got the back cover. Generally, there's a synopsis about what the whole story is about and some artwork that goes with it. And of course, the barcode because we're selling them in shops. So I think that's about all to show you about the actual setup and the process that we went through. It does not happen overnight and it doesn't even happen within a week. I think this took us um, about six months and that was really pushing it by doing a lot of work every night and every weekend that was pushing it to get it to this um, final product and then when you've actually got a book and if you do want to sell it you do a product launch and so we were very lucky we launched our series we did the first book and the Singapore book we launched it at the Inde independent festival of children's content so it was at the National Library here in Singapore we had like a few hundred people come along and it was at this festival that we were on the stage and um, we did a book reading and we were able to launch the book that way Okay, so now I've told you all about Monty Bear and I've told you about the books that I've done. The task that you've got now over the next few weeks in English class is you are now going to publish your own children's book. So go and think about all the information I've given to you there about the process you'll go and take, about having 32 pages and the different spreads and everything that you do, including with the illustrations, you're going to be your own illustrator. And you're going to create your own book. 32 pages, 700 words. You're following the hero's journey. So take your hero's journey wheel that you've got and you will condense it down to about six steps where you've got a beginning, a middle, crossing the threshold, having a problem, solving the problem and coming back to the beginning again. So modify it down for 700 words, go through the process where you're gonna figure out what's going to be on each spread and what will be on each page. Then we're going to use the app Book Creator and you can actually lay it out that way. From Book Creator, we are going to hopefully print them out and bind them and we're going to share them with the year one children here at the Australian International School. We'll figure out the details later on if we're going to do it via Google Meet or we're going to record a video and do a read-along video like we did with my one. Um, stay tuned for those details. Start. Start thinking now though about your hero's journey story, how you can turn it into a children's book. Remember the vocabulary might have to be a bit simpler. Um, you might have to change the themes a bit so it's appropriate more for six year olds as well. So you can ask your teacher for advice, come and speak to me. I'm down in the drama and the music office as well. Stop me in the hallway if you see me and I would love to see what you come up with, okay? So good luck everyone. You've got the next few weeks up until week 10 and can't wait to see what what you've got. See ya. Good luck.